on the Renvi show today, we've got one of the creative geniuses of India in general, of the Indian film industry. But I feel like this man has given gifts of creativity to our country. His new film, Tufan, will release very soon. And we spoke about everything from creativity to films to his past to boxing. Guys, make sure you catch Tufan on Amazon Prime Video from the 16th of July. And ensure you follow the Ranvi show on Spotify. It's a Spotify exclusive, which means every episode will be available on Spotify 48 hours before it's available anywhere else in the world. But for now, enjoy this conversation that's centered around creativity. We've got Farhan Akhtar only for the first time on the Ranvi show. I'm sure he's going to be back for many more episodes because there's a lot more to dig up and bring to you guys. Enjoy the episode. Mr. Farhan Akhtar, welcome to the Ranveer Show. Thank you, Ranveer. I look up to you a lot, primarily because you switch between creativity. And there's very few people in the world who are able to do that well, man. So, uh, how conscious are you about that gear switching ability? Because my first memory of you is seeing you on TV with long hair, promoting Dil Chata hai as a director. And now you're okay. like a wow. complete new <laughs> avatar of yourself. Um, you know, uh, I, I think what's important in all of this, what I've realized over the last 20 years, is to take work seriously and not take yourself so seriously. <laughs> I, think, <laughs> I think that's what it is. You know, so um, I just, I follow my heart here and I follow my creative instinct. Um, and whatever gives me joy in that moment or uh, something that comes along, whether it's in music, whether it's directing, whether it's writing or acting, um, I, I just follow my heart and, and I do it to the best of my ability. Mm. How are you? How's the last couple of years been? Are you in a good zone? Well, um, yeah, I mean, of course, everyone could be better. I'm sure even you could be better, yeah? you know, yeah, in yeah. terms of, I mean, you know, there's things that we all are missing out on. A uh, year and a half has just flown past without uh, many experiences being had. But um, on that's one, I mean, that's a little bit of sorrow, but uh, comparatively to the, uh, I guess, the amount of pain and the amount of grief that many other people around us are going through, you know, um, our problems are not, are not that massive. You know, at least, mm. I mean, my family is safe. My, my close friends are safe. Um, so I'm thankful for that every single day. But, uh, but yeah, it's been an interesting year. There's, um, we've learned a lot about ourselves, I think, in, this, in these yeah. last 18 months. What did you learn about yourself? Uh, well, to start with, you know, um, what, uh, is that you don't really need that much. You know, uh, I think we've all become, we've all become such uh, 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 you know, victims of consumerism. You know, uh, and <laughs> it, this time has really made you realize that you don't need that much, actually, you know, to, to be content, to be satisfied, to be happy. Um, and the importance of, uh, of the right people around you, you know, and, and uh, just spending time with those people and, and uh, contributing in whichever way. I mean, just emotionally to each other's lives. Um, that has been a, a massive learning. Mm. How do you feel right now? We're on the brink of a release. And this is something you've worked hard on, man. I'm a YouTuber. So for us, we have to just like record really quick. And then weekly, we have like four releases. So we're <coughs> shooting all the time. Yeah. But it's sort right. of not as impactful as creating a film where you have to first prep, you have to select a film, you have to prep your body. There's a lot of bandwidth that goes into that, man. So now when you're near that release, how do you feel? Um, I'm really excited. Yeah. You know, um, uh, we worked really, really hard on this film. You're absolutely right. Um, so it's finally all come together and it's a film that we feel good about, you know, that that's equally as important. I mean, one thing is, of course, celebrating something that you worked on and sharing it with people. But when you inherently feel good from like the pit of your stomach about something being uh, created the way you imagined it to be, you know, uh, that there's an there's an extra special feeling with that every single mm -hmm. time. So I'm really I'm, I'm, I'm excited to see how people will react to it. You know, and and um, uh, let's see. I mean, of course, fingers crossed that everybody uh, appreciates the effort and appreciates the work of, of all people concerned who made this film possible. You know, the whole Bhag Milka Bhag body or this body that you've built out in Tufan. Honestly, I'm a fitness professional. It's scary what you've done in a very positive way. Like, I don't know what other word to use other than scary because the level of rippedness you have, it's not easy, especially from a mental perspective. So when your director or the producers are telling you that, okay, this is the body well, that's required. When did, when did you get into fitness? Yeah? 
like way back i i grew up obese so i kind of have i was forced into fitness uh, i had a gallstone mm-hmm. removal at 16 so uh, my wow. parents just told me now start running start doing weight training uh, mm-hmm. and i had that phase of getting ripped you know i've i've eaten really clean i've done all your ketogenic diets of the world and all that yeah. but yeah. when we say you you on screen it's some other level of ripness so i don't know what kind of mental zone that takes um yeah I, i mean i don't know i mean i guess i mean since you since you you obviously have an understanding of of fitness you have an understanding of what it takes um you know it, it's it's really about immersing yourself here at the end of the day you know um uh, it's it's a commitment that you make to yourself you know that you've taken this on and um you have i mean what is it that you stand for here you know if if you can't fulfill some kind of a a goal that you've created for yourself how are you ever going to do that for someone else you know so um i i take these things when i take them on very very seriously you know um um i and i feel that films and especially sport films because i mean i've grown up also on a steady diet of of sport movies uh and sport documentaries you know and and they've always inspired me to to kind of try and be a better version of myself when it comes to the 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 mental and the physical aspect of things and you hope that through your effort people will also feel that same way you know and and which is why you have to give it your all i mean there's no half measures in kind of looking fit you know there's what's the <laughs> point you know i mean if you if you need to represent somebody who's at at peak fitness and in peak athletic condition then you have to you have to be that you can't pretend it hmm so you're a kid growing up in the 80s you're seeing <laughs> Sylvester Stallone and Rocky did you ever think that you'll play a boxer's role at some point you'll no, have a body like that No 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 <laughs> no never never I never thought about it I actually didn't stint um, for me uh, acting was a thought that only came into my head in about 2007 or 2008 when I did Rock on uh before that I was uh, absolutely content directing absolutely content producing and writing um so it wasn't a thing that crossed my mind was I influenced by it absolutely like all of us were you know um like standing in front of a mirror and doing those moves and stuff which you you know when, <laughs> when you see a film and you get really excited by it um that is something that i did do but not in my wildest imagination did i ever think that i'd be uh doing a film on boxing till till about 3 or 4 years ago hmm what happened in 2007 or 2008 that you had this kind of a switch because i feel again as someone who's into any form of film making as a filmmaker you fall in love with that like when you see your thought turned into reality that's yeah. one of the most yeah. joyous moments it's also yeah. one of the most like um it's kind of like the highs of life i feel so you've mm-hmm. already experienced those highs you've made classics like dil jata and laksh and then you switch into like acting so what was your zone that time um yeah you know i mean the thing is the rock on when it came and the script came to me there was something so um uh, magical about it you know um and again it was it was it was something i could identify with i mean i i love rock music um i play guitar um it was based in the city that i'm from so it wasn't a stretch for me to imagine how can i create this character or make this character um and whatever education that i did get about acting from working with some incredible actors as a director you know i i could put all of that to use in that film um and it felt really good it felt like liberating you know to to kind of take on the the persona of someone or take on the characteristics of another person um and it 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 felt like a, you wanted that fix again you know and <laughs> and then one thing kind of led to another um and here we are yeah i mean how many ever years later with uh, with the film on boxing which i couldn't have ever imagined that i would do do you have any favorite fighters like any favorite boxers or ufc fighters wow. or whatever Um yeah I mean I as far as my favorites go it's they're more in the like the traditional boxer uh category um you know so I mean of course there is you I mean no uh, uh nobody's list of of all time greats is is begins without Muhammad Ali you know um just uh, apart from what he did in the ring and apart from being one of the only boxers I think to win back the heavyweight title twice mm-hmm. after being champion once you know uh just his incredible uh persona outside the ring you know and what he represented to to people in terms of uh just the kind of personality what he stood for his views on life his political views were incredible you know just a great great man um and then of course you have like incredible fighters like smoking joe fraser was an incredible fighter you know um uh, the, uh manny pacquiao 
is absolutely incredible as well. Uh, Triple G is another guy who's who's just outstanding. You know, so um, there have been uh, over time, and of course, and then the beast Mike Tyson, like himself, was so unpredictable <laughs> in the ring. I mean, he honestly, you know, after the the time of Muhammad Ali, um, I, I think boxing, at least heavyweight boxing, you know, um, I I don't think the from my point of view, of course, there wasn't that the kind of curiosity till Mike Tyson came along. You know, he kind of infused that kind of manic uh, energy back into the into that uh, into that division. Um, and uh, yeah, so I've, I've always enjoyed boxing and boxing documentaries and boxing films. Yeah, do you know that boxing is having a resurgence right now in the world, like internationally? People are getting into it again. So I think there was a phase where people got way more into UFC into MMA. Yeah. And now there's this big resurgence because of people like Anthony Joshua or Floyd Mayweather. All all these guys. Uh, but it's it's cool that you're bringing up Mike Tyson because that's my earliest memory about boxing, I think, from the 90s, man. When he when he bit off Holyfield's ear. Like, I remember being a yeah, four-year-old and listening to yeah, that and getting free. Right. Yeah, but you know, I mean, see, that's also towards the kind of the tail end of his career. You know, uh, I mean, we were fortunately old enough in the 80s to understand this phenomenon of Mike Tyson here. Yeah. You know, when we saw him like first come on the scene, beat Leon Sphinx uh, and beat all those early guys and knock them out in, like he was like a one round specialist, you know, um, I mean, very rarely did people kind of make it into the second and third round with him. Uh, yeah. And he was, a, I mean, like, I mean, obviously really strong, great skill, insane hunger to to win, you know, and um, just, uh, I mean, yeah, he, he, brought, he kind of brought your attention back, back to the game. Absolutely. What did you learn about boxing doing this movie? Like, what did you learn about a boxer's mindset? Um, you know, actually, with uh, working with Drew Neal, who was my my the, the boxing coach that I first started with, and then moving on to um, working with Daryl Foster, um, who's been a boxer. Just so that I mean, I can make your uh, viewers also aware. So Daryl Foster is someone who was a boxer himself. Um, he then uh, was somebody who worked with Sugar Ray Leonard in Sugar Ray Leonard's corner was with him for close to two decades when Sugar Ray Leonard became the champion uh, in his division. Um, and then subsequently, like kind of post-retirement of, of actively being involved in that aspect of boxing, um, got into uh, fight choreography uh, for film. And uh, one of the earlier films that he did is one that all of us have loved, which was Ali with Will Smith. That was something that he had choreographed, you know, and then has worked on many films since. So his knowledge of boxing I mean, from, from the ABCs of boxing to how to capture it on film is phenomenal there, yeah. you know? So just to mm. sit and like listen to him, firstly, just listen to him of, about the stories of the boxers that he's fo got this incredible opportunity to interact with, spend time with, be in a corner with, you know, discuss boxing, discuss uh, uh, the warrior mindset as he calls it, you know? And, and that's what it was. He's like, I mean, you have to figure out how you can inculcate that mindset or kind of breathe that mindset into your being because you have to want it more than the other guy and the other guy wants it, you know, but how, you know, like, so the guy who's willing to endure more pain, the guy who's willing to um, go that extra round when his lungs and his legs have collapsed, you know, when everything in your body is telling you to stop, what is it that keeps you going? You know, so it's basically about building that warrior mindset in you. And he's like, there's one thing that you're fighting for a belt or you're fighting to win a bout. He's like, but there is, there's always something more. There's like always that one X factor in terms of what it is that you're fighting for. Whether it's something internal that you're dealing with, you know, proving something to yourself, whether it's killing self-doubt, you know, whether it's looking for self-respect, you know, or you're doing it for someone who you, who you love and who you care about, your coach, your wife, your kids. You know, he's like, so all boxers have something more than just, just the belt to fight for. And um, so it was just understanding all this from him, you know, and, and you try and apply that to, to yourself and to your mind when you, when you get into training for, when I got into training for this film. The movie that impacted me the most as a kid in my whole life, and it's still the movie that impacts me the most in my whole life is Laksh. Okay, like wow. I've seen it as a kid. And man, as a kid, all you understand is, okay, you know, you see the lead, you see Hrithik Roshan playing Lux. So I thought I'll, I'll say this to Hrithik Roshan, but I watched that movie twice or thrice every year, ever since I'm like 11 years old or whenever it released. Wow, that's amazing. Uh, 11, 12, I was around 11, 12 that time. Yeah, it was And I know, I know that movie scene by scene. So I was 11. And um, 
I know I know every scene of the movie and I know that people come and tell you that oh it's two movies in one and your response to that has been no you guys don't understand filmmaking <laughs> I'm on your side because that's how every every human's life is actually we live our life in phases and the mm. way you showed phases in that movie it was very intense it's something I relate to it's something that every kid who's seen that movie relates to man so the moment for me is something I've waited for my whole life just to talk to you and thank you because you don't know what that's given to my mindset you don't know how much of a warrior mindset you've put into that movie and how many kids yeah. have been kind of inspired to have that warrior oh, mindset oh thank you thank you so much thank you so much you know i must share one very interesting uh, episode with you about that film uh the reason the film my dad wrote the script right was because uh when uh, it was kargil divas in the year 2000 or 2001 uh where you know when uh, to celebrate operation vijay and the success of operation vijay so he had gone to kargil to lay he was invited to lay a wreath at the memorial of the of the fallen soldier you know um of the martyrs and he went there and he laid a wreath and he was talking to some uh, senior officer of the army there and that person was telling him you know that um it's so um it's such a uh, uh, dichotomy of sorts you know that uh, everywhere you read and everywhere every news channel every newspaper every person who has has a voice you know is singing praises of the indian army and saying we've done such a phenomenal job in in recapturing those peaks and and the the bravery and the sacrifice and the courage of our of our officers he's like but every single year the number of people who enroll themselves into the army as in the officer rank because that's usually an educated rank um is dwindling that is going down so it's no longer um, a, like a seen as a career option for a lot of people you know they want to go abroad and study they want to do different things be entrepreneurs do this do that and i mean of, of course to each their own you know but uh, somehow the army is not seeing that kind of influx of of people anymore uh and that stayed with my dad you know and he uh, told him that you know sir i'm glad you shared this with me i'm going to i'm going to write a script about it to let to try and encourage people to to get motivated to to be part of the indian army and that's why we made that film and um, the film released in 2004 in 2017 i went to the ima i hadn't been back since we had shot there in 2003 i went back i was in dehradun for some other work um and i requested the ima you know if i can come and visit i haven't been there for 13 years now so i'd like to just come and re- just kind of walk down memory lane you know being there so they were very gracious and they they kind of invited me over and i went so all those spots that rithik and i had done all these uh, scenes in um and then he took me to this newly i mean new for me it, which wasn't there when i had gone in 2003 they were uh, built a thing called the vikram batra mess where all the officers meet and um, we went there and he had asked all the the gcs to assemble there so all the cadets were there um in the hundreds right and um he said i want to show you something and um he took the mic um and he asked the cadets he's like how many of you are here today because you've seen the film lapch and almost 70% of all those cadets put their hands up you know so it is just incredible that firstly the power of film you know just kind of revealing itself in that kind of way secondly the story that the reason that this film was written a huge reason that this film was written was to inspire people to join the army and you are 13 years later you know i'm at i'm at the ima and i i see this with my own eyes that so many people are there because of that film you know and and to me like the the power of content the power of communication through through film is it honestly hit home i had never really understood the impact of it up until that point so that film has been very very special you know and and that moment is something that's kind of like just now chapoed into my head you know when i was there it's it's just um, it it's really made me think about um the success of a movie in in a very different in a very different kind of way we had special forces personnel on this show a uh, bunch of them and uh, they've told me about how the main issue with the indian army right now is the branding of it and my mm. response to them has always been yeah probably the only branding that the army has got is laksh like i mean right. they, there are other movies about it but for an entire generation born in the 90s born in the late 80s all of us relate to lakshman and you've not just made people join the army you've also helped the everyday guy 
or the everyday girl <coughs> look at life in a very different way like i woke up after that movie you know i right, woke no, up thank to you life so much, man. Thank you. That's so, very sweet of you. Even with YouTube, and I'm 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 basically running startups, and I'm also doing YouTube, right? So I have to right. gear switch my creativity a <coughs> lot. And I have been asked in the past that who do you look up to? But as a YouTuber, we don't have reference points, man, because we're the first generation doing this. So our reference points right. are you guys, like people who've done their thing in the 2000s. And I've often I've said Farhan Akhtar just because he does multiple things, like producer, director, whatever. So why are you doing so much? <laughs> um I, i think for the very same reason that you are yeah? you know i mean you want to express yourself in whichever way you feel you'd like to you know and and again i mean we are fortunate people there yeah? you know that we we get to do what we love to do we can make that our job we can make money off of it we can live our lives off of it you know it, it doesn't happen to everyone you know so many people love something else but end up doing something else because they don't have a choice you know so every single day gratitude is most important you know um and and that's all it is and and i i follow my heart and i'm thankful every single day to the audience and to the viewer and to the listener that allows me that that freedom to be able to do it you know so um that's that's essentially what it is so do you know who kunal shah is he's this entrepreneur he runs a company called credi sold free charge so uh, he's he's also one of the biggest twitter influencers in india and he he tweeted mm. this thing about creativity and just creative professionals mm. right he said that anyone who's in any sort of creative job where you see something and then your job is to convert it into reality it's very different from mm. say noble professions like being a doctor or a lawyer where you have to work in structure mm. here you get to work in free space Def yeah you follow a scientific process there yeah, yeah. sure uh and again noble professions but as robin williams said in dead poet society this is what you know life is about poetry and romance and all that hmm. um but hmm. in these professions you're required to see something and then go and execute like how you said you have a film that you want to direct uh, but yeah. and you'll go go down that route soon um so when yeah. you actually see your end product you have a huge sense of like happiness do you feel that that's like protected you in the long term just and and i'm not talking to you as the professional i'm just talking to you as the human being uh do you think it's kept your mental state kind of in place because i feel that a lot i i went into startups for my ambition and the more i went mm. deep into startups the more i realized what but my joy is in film making my joy is in writing mm. do you feel that ever mm. considering that you're also a producer uh you know absolutely you know honestly if if i didn't uh, if i didn't write <clears throat> if i didn't direct and if i didn't have these opportunities to to play these characters i think i'd go out of my mind there you know <laughs> uh, it keeps me sane you know because i mean i uh, you're constantly i mean i don't know i mean this is whether it's genetic whether it's i don't know just the uh, the environment that you grew up in you know uh, what influence i don't know where these influences come from i guess it's an amalgamation of many things um but my what excites me is is an idea what excites me is wanting to create something you know what excites me is like you start thinking of oh this love story of a boxer and now how do i make that into a film you know and then you just sit and you think about it and think about it and write things and tear things and write things and delete things and you know what i mean till you arrive at a place where it's like this is finally what it is that you were trying to say it comes out so i mean there is and i don't know that drives me you know and and honestly that keeps me sane because i mean i don't know what i'd do with all that energy otherwise um i i don't think i'm qualified to do those noble jobs you know um as as great as they are and, and as well as they are done by people who who love them um i'm not qualified for that you know and so this is uh, this is it for me this is the life i've chosen with with absolute joy and and total abandon you know so um i i love it it keeps me sane for sure after having directed after having understood scripts what do you look for in a film as an actor like why do you take on certain films is it because you want to put that part out of yourself like is there something inside you that you want to express through the film what why why how um, do you choose your stuff as an actor you know uh, it's it's difficult to say how it 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 happens because it's there's no formula to it you know or there's no there's no uh, a square plus b square equals c square in this in this uh, in this field at all you know um it's when you read something or when you hear something or when you think of something your body has some kind of like a physiological reaction to it you know oh. um it it excites your mind and it excites your your being 
at the same time. Um, and that's when you know that there's something worth exploring here. You know, um, mm. I mean, I've gone through readings where I've almost fallen asleep and you, you know immediately that, I mean, there's no chance you're going to do it. You know, you're, someone's uh, narrating a script to you and, and you're trying your best with how can you conceal a yawn without offending them. You know, <laughs> all these things happen, you know. Um, but, and, but when it's exciting, um, every single paw wakes up, yeah. You know, and, and you're like suddenly sitting at the edge of your seat, you're like listening to every word, listening, hanging on to every like kind of pause, comma, full stop. Um, and you just know. Um, I don't know what causes that to happen. Uh, I assume that it is uh, uh, somehow the coming together of all your life's experiences, all, uh, uh, you know, the ambitions that you have, uh, things that have inspired you in the past, things that you would like to hand over to, you know, as, as some kind of a collective experience to somebody else, sharing. Um, so all those things come together, but they come together, together in, a, in a very illogical way. You know, uh, I don't think you can describe it logically as to why you say yes to something and no to something else. Because, I mean, you could say yes to something that somebody else would have said no to before you. You know, so what was, uh, is it, the, the work's exactly the same. You know, but why have you understood it in a certain way while the other person didn't? You know, so I, I think it's also like, uh, this is just accumulation of who you are as a person that somehow finds its, uh, finds an avenue of expression through playing a character in a certain film. Correct me if I'm wrong, but I feel in creative professions, there's no such thing as competition because creativity is like an outcome of all your life's experiences up till that point, man. Like Absolutely. the fact that you select something versus someone not selecting it is probably you had some experience with boxing as a kid, therefore you took up Tufan versus someone maybe didn't. You know, like, and I feel there's no, there's actually no competition in the creative world, but a large section of the media industry looks at it as a very competition driven industry. I don't look at it that way, man. Yeah, and, and it shouldn't be, you know, because I mean, it, it, creates, a, it creates a false premise of what the industry is. You know, um, mm. there is no rat race. You know, this concept of number mm. one, number two, and you know, like all this, this it's, it's so unproductive. Um, yeah. I mean, at the end of the day, nobody can make a film in a vacuum. You know, it, it's not possible. You need people, you need people, like-minded people, uh, as enthusiastic, as excited as you are to make a film. Um, of course, there will be a face to that film, which will be an actor. Of course, there will be one person who kind of is the, the uh, overall, who has the overall view, that's the director. You know, all that will play a ma major role, but it's not possible just for the director and actor to get together and make a film. You need mm. so many people to come together and, and agree with you, you know, and believe in, in what it is that you're promising them um, and showing them. You know, so I don't know. I mean, it's it's absolutely and collaborate. It's a collaborative uh, effort, a collaborative art. Um, and the more we, the more ideas we exchange, the more we come together to tell stories without getting caught up in what other people perceive us to be. You know, uh, the healthier it, it it will be for us. Yeah. You know, I mean, at the end of the day, you can't stop people from comparing. You can't stop them from having their point of view. They're entitled to it, but we should not become victims to that. You know, we should not start believing that, oh, that's the way it should be. We know what it is, yeah? We are inside the, we are inside this world. You know, we know what, what we need to do and we should just stay focused on that. Yeah. I feel like competition only exists in sports and maybe politics, man. But it doesn't exist in any other industry because you have the ability to build your own niche, your own, use your own creativity to build your right. own unique identity. Um, no, but you know, see, the thing is, even in sport, what is very interesting is when you're competing with someone, you're competing with them there and then in that moment for that period of time. Leading up to then, the only person you're competing with is yourself. How can I be better? It's not that how can I be better than him? How can I be better than her? It's how can I be a better version of this athlete? How can I be a better version of myself as a boxer, as a runner, as a swimmer? How do I improve myself? And when I improve myself, when I go to compete, I'm going to just be there focusing on, I have to do my best. It's not that I have to do better than you. It mm -hmm. really isn't that, you know? So, and that's the fight even in boxing, which I mean, you don't think about because you see two people going at each other. But the, the true fight really is, do I have it in me? You know, it's not, does he have it in him? Or do I have it to beat him? It's not that, do I have it in me? to see this thing through that I believe I can do. That's what mm. it is. So, I mean, of course, there's a competitive side to it in that moment, 
but but it's the respect that athletes have for one another the minute the race is over for example you know it's 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 incredible i mean there is so much love and so much respect and so much understanding of what it takes to be able to perform at that level as rivals yeah uh i mean i i hear you and i completely agree with you firstly but specifically again about tufan to go into that sort of a character where or a boxer where you know you have to train as farhan and not not just the character you farhan has to train his own body do you have to switch this right. super chill mindset because from your instagram from your social media i feel like you're a very chilled guy i've seen you on gorav kapoor stories and everything and you're dancing yeah. and like you know you're a relaxed guy <laughs> but to switch into this intensity yeah. what does that take because i have a few actor friends who have to switch up a lot about themselves man um well you know i mean the thing is that this this honestly it just comes from the the love of what you do you know you get these opportunities to be able to to play characters that are so out there far removed from your comfort zone or from who you are you know that you have to be able to enjoy it yeah? when when it comes it's rare mm. you know not everybody gets these opportunities you know i mean i i thought when bhag mil ka bhag was done i honestly never thought a film like this would come along again you know which would which would require this this dedication again on a on a physical front i didn't think so you know and but when it came and apart from of course the boxing is one side of it what the film represents which you'll which you'll get a sense of when you see it um you just how can you not be grateful and how can you not be like you know since this has found me i have to make it uh, i have to give it my all mm. you know so um i mean it's i am I'm, i'm absolutely chilled in real life i'm very relaxed and i absolutely love my my uh, uh time to myself and to like kind of hang loose with my friends um but this requires another approach and it requires another wearing of another kind of cap and you just have to do it there's no there's no getting around it here keeping in mind the todun tak mentality of course i've got to ask <coughs> you about your fitness yeah. regime like what did you do how did you exercise what was the weight training what was the diet let young kids know and take that inspiration from you mr akhtar all right wonderful man so um to start with uh, when i started my my entire training process was um, up until shoot we had roughly about 7 to 8 months um so i got into training i mean immediately into boxing training so um 6 days a week um 3 hours every morning was dedicated to boxing and then about an hour and a half to 2 hours at times in the evening was dedicated to weight training strength training uh, and the aesthetic side of what the character needed to to kind of look like for for to look picture good um and that was non stop no break no excuses day in day out 6 days a week for 8 months so that's what it took to be able to do that and um, i mean the thing with boxing is um you do require tremendous amounts of energy because you're burning a lot of calories and you're you're expending a lot of your like you your, your card your what what they call cardiovascular strength you know and your your endurance has to be incredibly high um and to keep going to find that right balance you can't i mean of course you need protein because you want to look a certain way and you need your muscles to stay because you're burning all of that off while you're doing boxing training so finding that right balance between how how much protein goes in in a day how many carbs are needed because you need that energy how much you know, when you're, how when much you're, did you when eat training. and what did you eat like how many grams did you consume um well um i i think if i'm not mistaken we at one point uh, we had gone up to roughly about we started maybe at about 2000 2000 to 2100 calories a day uh is what was going on um and then there was a portion that came where i had to like kind of become bigger um so then we had even gone up to 3000 calories a day at one point um and then we continued with 3000 calories a day but really cut down on all the exercise because i needed to completely get out of shape and get like a big belly and stuff like that so i i continued eating the way i was but i wasn't burning so you know so it was just calorie deficit and calorie surplus really Uh, is what we were working towards but um uh, again these are things i mean you can of course educate yourself on you know but but it's always advisable to speak to people who know this better than you you know um uh, whatever i may say here i mean i have basic knowledge there are people who studied this as as of course as a science and we must always we must always speak to those people because they need to understand what and different things work for different people 
not everyone can follow exactly the same diet and get the same result mm. you know because our metabolic rates are different the way we react to uh, training is different uh, how many calories we may expend in the same amount of time is different you know so um that's where these experts come into play and i just uh, trusted them and followed their advice blindly what about like the protein did you consume supplements like to hit your protein mark did you eat all i'm assuming oh, yeah, you yeah you had eggs. to i was having uh yeah i mean i was having uh, egg whites i was having chicken i was having fish we uh, cut out as much red meat as we possibly could um and uh, and protein shakes yeah so i was having two protein shakes a day is what i would be having and and if i still felt hungry because that would happen given the amount of calories that were being burnt you know um i'd even throw a protein bar in there once in a while like a low low carb low carb high protein bar even that would happen but um yeah but it i mean there is there is a certain monotony to it you know um, which your mind has to get used to and uh, it does at times get difficult when you're out and about and everyone's eating whatever they want and you <laughs> have to sit mm. on the side you know with with your little with your own tiffin box and mm. and eat what's been uh, been asked of you so th- you you have to like really really make your mind strong when it comes to these things but again i mean when you're inspired by the goal um these things tend to happen organically you then it doesn't bother you as much i think when people are talking about todun tak mentalities it's much more about overcoming the monotony than actually eating or exercising all that's fun oh absolutely you know um but uh, i by uh, my the one daryl foster and andrew both told me something was very interesting they're like there is one thing which a boxer can have which is natural ability to fight and to be a great fighter he's like but the fighter who wakes up every single day who may be in, like not not must may not have a, amazing natural ability but he wakes up every single day goes to the gym hits those drills follows what he's supposed to do more often than not he'll be the one who'll win in the ring you know so basically training hard and being disciplined and focused will always trump natural ability when it actually comes to to that moment of of asking um and uh, so yeah i mean it, it absolutely is uh, your largest battle is is staying focused that is your largest battle in the ring for films and even for life man farhan akhtar thank you for being on the show i appreciate oh, it oh thank you ranveer what a pleasure man likewise likewise hope to have this with you in person once the world is back to normal and just really appreciate yeah. you for your work man everything you've done uh whether it's as an actor whether it's what you've created it's always kind of left a mark on not just me but a bunch of people my age or my my entire generation thank you so much, much. so from thank from my so heart much. man thank you oh thank you it's been a pleasure all the best thank you <sighs> so that was the episode for today i hope you guys enjoyed it the highlight of this episode for me was all about conveying the kind of impact that this man has had on my life through his work of course he's going to be back on the show of course we're going to have many more even deeper conversations but for now make sure you show your support to the man make sure you go watch toofan on amazon prime video and make sure you keep following the ranvi show on spotify every episode's available on spotify 48 hours before it's available anywhere else in the world lots more conversations centered around the indian film industry and possibly even hollywood are going to be coming up on the ranvi show very soon stay tuned <laughs>